Now we'll start chapter 2. In this chapter we'll talk about forces and we'll also discuss Newton's laws of motion. Isaac Newton summarized his ideas about how things move and why things move in three very succinct and very clear laws of motion that are still considered the basis of classical physics today. We'll start off talking about force and we'll define it first. The word force in physics means exactly what it means in everyday language, exactly what you think it would mean. A very simple, very clear and understandable definition would be simply a push or a pull. Force is a push or a pull, and that's something we can all understand because we've all experienced that. Here's some examples. Lots of different things in the world are forces. So I'll just list a few different examples of things that are all very different, but all are pushes or pulls. Gravity is one, the force due to gravity, that's sometimes called weight. In fact, the definition of weight is simply the force on an object due to gravity. But it's a force. Gravity pulls you down toward the Earth, and that pull downward is a force. Tension is a force. And by tension here, I mean the tension in a rope or a cable or a string, something like that. If you tie a rope to something and pull it, there's tension in the rope, and it's pulling at both ends. But that tension is a pull. It's a force. Lift, and in this case, I'm referring to the lift generated by the airflow over an airplane wing. If you were to look at the cross-section of an airplane wing from the side, it would look something like this. It's usually pretty flat on the bottom and curved on the top. So the airplane in this case is flying in this direction. And this is the leading edge of the wing here. And as the airplane moves through the air, you could think of it as the air flowing past the wing like this. And we'll talk about this in more detail later on. But just know that the shape of the wing causes it to generate lift upward as it moves through the air and that's a force and that's obviously one of the forces that helps an airplane stay up in the sky lift is a force and friction is a force we'll discuss friction later in this chapter friction is a force that tends to make things stop it's a force that, that appears whenever one object slides against another and friction always opposes the motion between between two objects and friction is a force so all of these things even even though they're very different things they're all can be thought of as a push or a pull so all of these are forces force has direction so it's a vector anything that has direction remember is a vector and force has to have direction you cannot push something without pushing it in a particular direction so force is a vector now we often use arrows to represent vectors because arrows little arrows that we draw on the page they inherently have a direction just like a vector does so when drawing diagrams it's useful to represent vectors with little arrows and that's true with forces too so let's draw an object here this is some mass and we'll draw a force pushing on it so draw a little arrow here and I'll call it F for force now in, in many cases it's useful to make a longer arrow to represent a stronger force so if I were to draw this mass again over here and I were to imagine pushing it twice as hard I would draw an arrow twice as long so we could call that 2F if this is force F then this is a force twice as much and and at least approximately I've made this arrow about twice as long as that one now some textbooks instead of using the length of the arrow to represent the size of the force or the amount of the force they use the width so some textbooks would do it like this they might draw a force here acting on a mass and if they want to represent a bigger force acting on the mass they might draw a big fat arrow like that pushing um, that's that's okay as well that adequately shows that one force here is bigger than the other one but there are some good mathematical reasons for using the length to represent the size or the magnitude of the force so I'm gonna do it that way I will in general represent a bigger force with a longer arrow. Uh, force, one of the units for force would be pounds. So if you wanted to draw a force, for example, 
of three pounds pushing on an object you could draw the little arrow and you could write three pounds next to it and you might want to put a little M on the mass this just shows that a force of three pounds is pushing this mass in this direction and following our um, earlier discussion if you wanted to draw a bigger force you could do a bigger arrow so six pounds pushing mass M to the right